。那呃，对，非常欢迎大家来参与我们下午第一场议程。对，那在开始之前，让我快速的介绍一下这场议程，那也介绍一下我们 Rebo 在看这场议程的时候的一些点。对，那这场议程是由 Utah s a w a b e 和呃卡斯亚诺姆拉两位讲师带来的。那两位都是 NTT 呃 s a r k t e a m 的成员，所以我们可以看到，一方面他们是呃也算是个研究员，但一方面他们有很好的实务经验，他们就在 s a r k t e a m 工作，所以可以看到第一线的这些呃攻击发生的状况。所以我们觉得这是一个很实物的议程，那也是比较偏蓝队相关的议程。那它的题目是 Why Panda Love USB Observing Targeting Attack by Chinese APTs。那在这样一层，我们看到的时候，我们第一眼就想，哎 ，USB 这个题目其实已经大家已经讨论了非常久，但为什么到现在这个还是那么的猖獗，大家还是用 USB 来做攻击呢？那我们在这样一层里面就可以看到。哎、欸，这个讲者为这个议题才带来的分析。那另外一方面啊，他也分析了很多中国的 APT 啊，包含了啊像 Mustan 啊 Panda 这样的一些 a p Group。那这些 Group 跟跟台湾啊，也相当有可能成为他们攻击目标。所以对于呃、啊、台湾治安的从业人员是非常有必要去多多了解呃、啊、这一些呃、啊、攻击手法的。好，所以我这里就快速介绍一下呃。啊呃，两位讲师和今天议程。那接下来我们就把时间啊、呃、交给两位讲师啊，尤塔索瓦贝和卡斯亚诺姆拉。那大家掌声欢迎他们。Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for introducing.、Uh, I'm Kazuya Nomura. Hello, everyone. In this talk, we'd like to show you about targeting attacks from USB flash drives, titled "Why Panda Loves USB." Let us introduce ourselves. Yuta Sabe, Kazuya Nomura. We are SOC analysts at NTT Security Holdings. Let's take an introduction at first. APT groups each have sophisticated attack flows, such as malware side loading techniques, zero day exploit, and so on. On the other hand, traditional methods are still effective and widely used for initial access methods. For example, fake software installer, malicious decoy document files, and comp compromised USB drives. Now we are focusing on USB flash drive methods. In our SOC, we have observed four target, targeted attacks via USB flash drives. In June 2022, we observed operations of Kill Someone in manufacturing company. Also, in June 2022, we observed operations by TA410 in media related company. In August 2022, We observed other operations of Kill Someone in manufacturing company, and in March 2023, we observed operations by Mustang Panda in medical company. In summary, we have observed technical incidents initiated from USB flash drives in manufacturing, media, and medical company. These incidents were launched at overseas branch of Japanese companies in Asia. Then we cover three APT groups and campaigns in this presentation: Mustang Panda, TF10, and Kill Someone. After focusing on each incident closely, we examine a simple question: Why are USB drives, flash drives, favored for attacks even in advanced targeted attacks? First, we focus on Mustang Panda. We observed operations by Mustang Panda in March 2023 at Asia branch of Japanese company. Mustang Panda is mainly targeting non-governmental organizations from various countries. In our case, we spread our malware was deployed via USB flash drive. We spread our is malware consisted by plugins. The attack was initiated from USB flash drive at overseas branches. And malware was found on multiple hosts and USB drive flash drives, but C2 infrastructure was seems already inactive at that time. 
We detected this incident by Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. Detected alert was Tantam Actor Activity Detected. This signature is defined by Microsoft and Tantam is alias of Mustang Panda named by Microsoft. We think this Tantam Actor Activity Detected alert may be triggered by suspicious USB drive activity. In all customers that our SOC monitors, we observed only two alerts of Tantam Actor Activity Detected. In both cases, a MySAS file was attempted to execute from USB drive. And we observed interesting characteristics of the movement. In infected machine, there are a lot of cre file creative activities of suspicious file on external drive. These facts suggest that attackers are strongly targeting to spread malware via external storage, such as USB flash drives. This is a full overview of observed incidents. Of course, the whole series of incidents started with a USB flash drive. It is characterized by extensive uses of side loading to load malicious DLS into legitimate executable files. It all starts with a malicious USB flash drive plugged into a computer, le leading to the execution of PlugX, aka CoPlug, which then launches a backdoor then that exfiltrates the files of interest, keystrokes, and screenshots. And observed for malware is called Whisprider now. This malware is used by multiple APT groups such as UNC4698, a set actor that has targeted oil and gas organizations in Asia. And Checkpoint reported some interesting facts about Mustang Pandas with Brider. This incident case and infection chain is almost the same as our case. One of Whisperider victims is medical personnel. In March 2012C, the victim is participated medical conference, sharing presentation via USB flash drive. As a result, malware was spread in his home hospital and colleagues. The rep this, this report also mentioned these incidents are collateral damage out of the main targets of Mustang Panda. And back in December 2022, Abbas reported new unknown malware, SE, which have very similar characteristics in our cases. All of malware that reported in th this report are very similar to Wisp Rider. Was no drive that checkpoint and Bandiant reported one. We have observed two addresses of C2 server, but these servers are already dead around December 2022. Additionally, a file uh, exhibiting behavior that perfectly matches our cases was uploaded on by a total. This file is posted on November 2022 and posted in Japan. The file is an SFX archive and its behavior after execution matches as the attack flow which we observed. The MM SAT from Yamba has given a bad rating to the file in the community tab of Miles Tota. Myanmar is a prominent target country for the Mustang Panda group, and Abbas reports also mentions attacks targeting Myanmar. This is summary of incident we observed and attribution of set actors according to the Tayangudo monorail. It uses a lot of dear side loading techniques for operations and use whip slider malware. From here, we focus on TA410. We observed operations by TA410 in June 2022 at Japanese media company. TA410 is targeted attack groups utilizing the malware flow cloud. Since 2022, we observed several attacks targeting Japanese companies in SOC, possibly targeting Japanese companies explicitly. This attack was initialized by execution of malicious files from USB flash drives at overseas locations. 
Unfortunately, C2 were arrived at that time. And uh, communications with C2 were confirmed. It seemed that some of data was transferred. This is an observation history of flow cloud in our SOC. We observed flow cloud since 2018 and noticed some versions taxonomies. And we observed attacks in mass media and infrastructure companies in 2012. We observed this incident by CloudStrike Falcon. The alert was execution command and scripting interpreter follow through. This alert noticed execution of legitimate setlang.exe. Now, suspicious locations of setlang.exe program files, MS Build, Microsoft Expression, Brent, MSOL has been reported by other vendors now. This is a full overview of observed incident. Of course, the whole series of incidents started with a USB flash drive. Side loading was frequently used in this case too and decoy dialogue was shown in Chinese. This fact can be attributed to the fact that the malware is specifically targeting Chinese-speaking employees of Japanese company branches in China. FlowCloud extracts its own configs in memory. In this malware config, some Chinese comments appear. Therefore, the attacker is likely to be attributed to China. And this config indicates that this malware uses non-standard ports, 562 and 563, for its communication destination. And this malware has rootkit, which is able to hide malicious processes. This function is implemented by removing a targeted process entries from a process list of an undocumented e-process structure. Each Windows version has defined offset variables for e-process. This new variable suggests that now it supports Windows 11 version 21H2. And this diagram shows correlation between samples and C2 infrastructures. And there is another sample communicated with C2 www.dlmam.com. This sample seems a variant of Dropper known as WebWAM or Space Pirates. And these types of Dropper is known to be used by TA428. In past, it is reported that TA428 shares some attack tools with TA410. This has some connection between these two attack groups. This is summary of incidents we observed and attributions of stress actors according to the Diamond model. They use FlowCloud for operations. As mentioned before, it seems that TF410 sharing infrastructures with TF428. Hello. Hello. Sorry. Hello, I'm Yuta. From this, point, this part, I will explain. Uh, so far, uh, we have presented examples of targeted attacks uh, by China on Mustang Panda and DA410. Finally, we present the case study of Kill Someone. As described before, we observed the operations of Kill Someone in manufacturing company in June and August of 20, 2022. Kill Someone is a type of an attack campaign first observed in 2020. It is believed to be an APT group with Chinese involvement. However, its attribution is still unclear. The attack is initiated by executing a link file on USB file, a USB device. The DLL side road executes a malicious DLL file. The attacker brings in a set of malicious DLL files and legitimate exit files that are vulnerable to DLL side loading. This is called Bring Your Own Vulnerable Drive, BYOVD. Finally, the target is infected with Plug X. In our sub environment, we have observed uh, these attacks targeting overseas locations of Japanese manufacturing and heavy industry. 
In this case, the attack is hitting a Southeast Asian bridge. In this page, uh, we will show the specific flow of this attack. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the starting point of the attack is the user's execution of the link file in the USB file, USB drive. Uh, when the link file is executed, uh, a window debug file named exe to debug to the exe or maybe e to the exe is executed, and, and multiple child processes are spanned recursively. Uh, in the process, other malicious components are copied from another uh, folder in the USB to the same directory. It then performs site routing uh, over malicious DR files and then decrypts encrypted payloads and finally infects plug -backs. Both the upper uh, and lower flows in this figure uh, use similar techniques to eventually uh, infect plug -X. Uh, when we observe the q attack in our environment, ADR alerts allowed us to discover the infected host. Here, we will check how ADR products detect it. Uh, Windows Defender generates an alert named System File Masquerade. Uh, the detailed logic is unknown, but the description of this alert states that it means that a file disguised as a Windows System File has been detected. So uh, in, this, in this process tree, uh, the starting exe file is executed, and then the process safeguard.exe, uh, media e.exe, and svchold.exe are launched in sequence. However, all of these entities are the same legitimate as the file, and then this file is vulnerable to DL side loading, so attackers can exploit it to execute most of DLS. In this case, suspicious behavior is detected and another file being launched under the name of svchost.exe. Another idea detection technique is to detect malicious DL side loading. When performing uh, such DL side load attacks, uh, attackers bring in a set of vulnerable resume exe files and malicious DL files. While the resume file can be renamed, and the malicious DL file will be used with its original name. So uh, these attacks can be detected by loading the DL files in different locations than usual. Thankfully, uh, attackers uh, uh, who perform Q somewhere campaigns have been using uh, the same vulnerable loader for many years. So uh, we do not need to change our detection logic as often. One of the features of QSAMWA is that the path in compromised USB file is crafted to hide malicious files. By using a white space in the path of the folder containing the malicious files, the path will not be visible to users when they browse in, in Explorer. And the attacker creates a link file that references the hidden file in this way, forcing the users to execute it without their knowledge. This figure shows the link file uh, used in the someone campaign. And you can see that uh, it contains white space in the path specified in the target field. The hidden folders make it very difficult to notice the, the presence of malicious files or that you are infected with malware. In addition, a variant of PragX has been confirmed to leak information by copying files from the infected host to the hidden folder. The sample has been linked to Mustang Panda and is believed to be related in some way. Now, uh, based on what we have seen so far, we have filled in the, this diamond graph. Regarding the attribution of this attack, we know that it is a China related ABT group, but uh, we have not been able to confirm any further connection. We also have no clues as to the infrastructure. Uh, we and uh, the attack use USB for uh, initial comp compromise, then the other side loading, and finally infecting plug It also uses white spaces in the malicious file path to mislead the user. We have observed cases of infection at manufacturing and heavy industry uh, branches in Japan. 
Here, we consider the similarities between the Mustang Panda and the Cubesom 1. In this figure, the similarities with Mustang Panda are noted in red. This shows that there is a strong connection between Mustang Panda and the Cubesom 1. It is true that China Nexus APT often uses Plagex in its attacks, but uh, the, the detailed techniques are similar, such as hiding folders using white space. Therefore, we believe that the Q someone campaign may involve a specific group within Mustang Panda. Then, we will now change the topic slightly and discuss why China Nexus APT often uses USB for its attacks. The three attack cases had several common characteristics. First, the attacks were carried out by APT groups associated with China. The second is that uh, they targeted overseas branches of a Japanese company. The third was a USB-based attack. Most of our so clients are large Japanese companies and they are in security conscious enough to invest in security. Therefore, incidents using USB rarely occur at domestic sites and most of them occur at overseas sites. Thus, it is true that there are areas where USB-based attacks are more likely to occur and are areas where they are less likely to occur. We have often observed USB attacks in China Nexus APT attacks, but why? Before discuss discussing this question, we first consider the regional difference in the occurrence of USB incidents. In other words, uh, there are areas where USB-based attacks are more likely to occur and areas where they are uh, less likely to occur. So uh, what are the difference between areas prone to USB incidents and those that are not? Let's start with this question first. Here uh, we will raise the possible starting points for USB-based attacks in general. First, malicious insider. This is a case where a malicious person sneaks into an organization and uh, launches an attack using USB. In this case, there is a possibility of not only infecting malware, but uh, also launching a more high impact attacks, uh, such as leaking confidential information within the company. And we have identified such cases on, more, uh, on rare occasions. However, there have not been many cases because of the high hurdles to achieving such attacks. Second, social engineering. Attackers send malicious USBs to employees of the target organization. Most recently, in 2021, the Russian actor Finn Seven conducted a large scale bad USB attack against the US. TF10 uses this technique to conduct attacks. Finally, rather movement from infected hosts. Some types of malware use USB media for uh, spreading. When USB connected to an infected host, the malware is copied to the USB. By connecting that USB to another host, then uh, that host becomes infected with the malware. Uh, by repeating this process, the malware spreads towards the organization via USB. Mustang Panda and Kisan went to get advantage of the self-spreading feature of malware to spread damage with the organization. Next, we consider USB-based attacks by region. We consider differences in the number of attacks between attacks targeting Asia and targeting uh, other regions. In this case, we assume the EU and the US. We will also categorize attacks by state-sponsored APT groups and other uh, cybercrime type uh, attacks. Note that many and few uh, here do not refer to the absolute three numbers, but rather to percentage of the total number of attacks. In Asia, uh, a certain number of USB-based attacks by cybercrime have been confirmed. There also have been many reported cases of USB use in China Nexus APT attacks, as described earlier in this presentation. One hypothesis arises here. It is that Asian countries are infected due to high USB usage and low security awareness. Is this correct? We will also look at the trends of attacks against other regions. 
The most recent and well-known example of spray and prey attacks within the US is raspberry robin. Raspberry robin is a type of worm, and it downloads uh, malware from a compromised QMAP NAS. It is a worm with a cybercrime type malware, and spreads via USB and shared folders. We have also continuously observed this in our SOG customer environments since 20, 2022, and most recently as well. Most of the incidents are at overseas branches of Japanese companies, but we have also reported a small number of cases confirmed at the domestic locations with Japanese media industry. Thus, many non-target cybercrime type attacks using USB devices have been observed outside of the uh, Asian region. In addition, users in other regions are also assumed to use USB devices routinely, just like users in Asia. What about APT target attacks? In fact, there are not that many cases of USB using used to buy non-Chinese APTs. One of the few reported cases is that uh, of Russian, uh, Russian APT using USB malware to attack Ukraine. They reused the old malware Andromeda and its she to infrastructure to conduct the attack. The USB contains several old malware and is infected by executing a link file. It should be noted that this attack case is not an advanced technique. In contrast, Chinese APT has further expanded uh, its attack surface from the Asian region. They continue to expand their target area, sometimes primarily targeting government agencies. Uh, Mustang Panjo is attacking government agencies in Europe with HTML smuggling attacks. Europe uh, yeah, TA410 has also reportedly expanded its attack southwest area, targeting US UTT companies. As described above, there have been very few cases of USB attacks by APT, other than China Nexus APT. We will fill in the blanks in the table. Many cases of cybercrime attacks, including Raspberry Robin, have been observed in the US and European regions. On the other hand, and there are very few attack cases by APTs other than China Nexus APTs. Based on the discussion so far, two things can be said. First, China Nexus APT prefers to use USB. China Nexus APTs prefer to use USB for attacks outside of Asia, but this is not the case for other APTs. The second is that this is not due to a geographical factor uh, yeah, cybercrime type attacks are widely observed in Asia and other regions, but APT attacks tend to be predominantly by Chinese APTs. This is not consistent with the hypothesis that Asian countries are infected due to high USB usage and low security awareness. So it is suspected that other factors may be involved. Now, we turn our attention to the, to the environments targeted by USB-based attacks. As mentioned at the beginning, there are multiple options for traditional methods used for initial access. Among them, there must be some advantages of attackers to choose utilizing uh, physical devices. The first is that the environment is isolated from the internet. For example, uh, confidential information, such as customer information, might be handled in isolated environment. Isolation from external networks makes it difficult for attackers to reach them. USB attacks have the advantage of being able to uh, launch attacks against such environments. Also, Environments where USB is used routinely are also a targetable attacks. Of course, an attack using USB cannot succeed in an environment where USB is not used. If there's no strict policy and USB is used routinely, such an attack would be very easy to conduct. Moreover, 
The same risk also exists in environments where organization policies prohibit the use of USB devices. Uh, in this environment, it may make file sharing more difficult. So employees may use USB devices behind the organization's back in favor of convenience, leading to a new risk of shadow IT. Here, a new hypothesis arises. It may not be a geographical factor, but rather an environmental one. This environment is likely to be greatly influenced by the type of industry. Therefore, let us consider the usage rate of USB by industry. This graph shows, uh, this graph relates to the number of USBs in our customer's environment as observed in our SOC. We examined the number of USB devices connected to hosts where our ADR agents are deployed. The horizontal axis represents the customer we indicate their industry. The vertical axis shows the rate of USB devices used to the number of hosts in the organization. Higher numbers indicate that more USB, are, uh, USB devices are in use in the organization. Note that the scale on the vertical axis is omitted. Each organization has different policies and targets uh, for implementing Indian agents, and uh, it is difficult to make a general conclusion. However, we can see that the usage rate of USB device is high in organization in the manufacturing and transportation industries. These uh, uh, organization seems to use USB routinely in their operations for some reason. On the other hand, it is very plausible that the usage rate of USB is low in telecommunication companies. As described before, we observed the target attacks in media, manufacturing, and medical company. The same industries are highlighted in this graph. So this suggests that there is some relationship between industries where USB is used routinely and industries where insiders uh, incidents occur. In other words, organizations that frequently use USB devices may have been chosen as targets. Of course, uh, there are just characteristics of Japanese companies. And, so, and the survey was conducted in a limited number of industries. We believe that a more interesting result would be obtained in the survey was conducted in a wider range of industries, for example, in governmental organizations. Now, I will summarize this content of this part. We have seen that USB drives remain effective as initial access. Even in large corporations, incidents using USB drives have occurred frequently at overseas branches. And even in Japan, which sometimes has strict security policies, incidents of this kind sometimes occur. In this context, uh, we have explained why China Nexus APTs prefer USB drives. USB devices are effective in environments where attackers cannot be reached with other methods or with where USB devices are used routinely. And as China Nexus APT adapts to its target environment, it is likely that they have become more specialized in uh, their USB-based attack techniques. So how can we deal with such attacks? First, it is just by restricting the use of USB within the organization. It is important to prevent employees from using USBs under the radar by establishing security policies within the organization and restricting the use of USB ports themselves. It is also important to focus on employee training and sharing information about cases of targeting attacks using USBs and making them aware of the dangers of USB compromised will also uh, help reduce shadow IT risk. It should also take into account the minimization of the damage through post-infection detection. Each attackers use different methods, and not all attacks can be detected with the same technique. 
we need to create custom signatures for them. Some malware also performs data exploration with USB. So detection starting from a large number of file copies is another detection technique. This is a summary of this presentation. Uh, this presentation deals with USB-based target attacks by China Nexus APT. First, we showed samples of them we observed in our SOC environment. Mustang Panda, da 410 and Give Someone are all attacks by China Nexus APTs. And we have observed these attacks at overseas branches of Japanese companies. Based on these cases, we discuss why China Nexus APT groups prefer to use USB. They clearly favor USB flash drives for their operations. We found that and the reason for this is not a lack of high USB usage or lack security policies in the target countries. Rather, we consider that the industries targeted by China Nexus APTs are environments in which USB is used, and, the, uh, and that attackers have come to use, use it, USB in order to adapt to these environments. That is all for our presentation. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you're welcome to send them to this address. Thank you. Uh, OK. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I think we still have a time. Maybe we can have one question. Yes. So anyone have a question to ask our presenter? Oh, here is. Uh, you can use some mic here. Oh. Hello. Uh, thanks. Uh, it's a very good sharing, and thank you. Uh, I have a quick question about uh, the third groups you mentioned. Uh, because you mentioned they once used the BYOBD as a, in their attacks. So I just want to know uh, what kind of driver they used in their operation. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question again? Uh, yeah, uh, in the third uh, third group, uh, Yuta san just mentioned, uh, is uh, they want they use the BYOVD in their attacks, and I just want to know the uh, what kind of drivers uh, they use in their attack when they do an attack. Yeah. Tr你的driver是指什么？呃，就是它应该，因为它说标号，应该是它可能用一个，就是有弱点的转的那个驱动程式哦，所以我想知道那个是什么驱动程式这样子。对对对。OK，就哪一只哪一只驱动程式这样子？对
Uh, I think someone asked me asked the question in the slide all about uh, does the uh, USB management uh, the policy such as forbidden to use a USB or a company has a policy la you cannot use a B is is that very common in Japan or not? Uh, we think the US memory policy is strictly and uh, managed uh, by company USB. Uh, but and few cases of in Japan country, there are uh, two incidents uh, because uh, from USB flash drive, so <laughs> maybe 18% or 9% high thing. <laughs> okay. okay, fine. Um, Oh, I think we have uh, already, yeah, okay. I think we already run off time, and uh, let's thank again for the presenter. Uh,再帮我们两位讲师掌声鼓励一下。那如果有任何问题,也欢迎可以直接到台前跟讲师讨论。好,那我们这场议程就到这边,那谢谢大家参与。